Hello, I'm Unstable Voltage and welcome to Phoenix Point. Before I start, full disclosure, I am an employee of Snapshot Games, the developer of Phoenix Point, and therefore you should consider everything I say as being potentially biased. With that out of the way, I should also mention once again that this is a development build. The game is still in relatively early development, and as a result, anything that you see here should not be considered final. There are still many things that are work in progress and haven't been implemented or fully implemented yet. So don't, uh, don't take anything you see here as gospel. But the reason I'm doing this little video is I wanted to show you guys the free aiming system uh, that the team is currently working on. This is something that we haven't shown before. And uh, it isn't quite finished yet. There are still some kinks to work out. But it's an interesting little system that does take the game back more towards its original XCOM roots as opposed to constant snap aiming. So I'll just give a little demonstration of it. Like I said, it is still a work in progress. Uh, one other thing you will notice now, we have implemented this little bar at the bottom, uh, which actually shows us how many time units we have. So with this assault selected, you can see that uh, if I move within the blue zone, we can still move one tile at a time, uh, but if I move within the blue zone, you can actually see how much of our uh, time units we're still going to have remaining. So anywhere within the blue zone, we will still have enough time units left to take a shot. If we go beyond the blue zone into the yellow zone, uh, we will not have enough time units to shoot. I'm just going to quickly dash these guys forwards because I want to be able to uh, show you the free aiming system though. So we should spot a couple of enemies in a second. There's the first one. And let's just go and move a couple more guys up as well. Uh, the same with the heavy. Let me just run the heavy forwards. And I will run forwards the other assault. Let's get him right up to the front, actually. And we'll spot the second alien that I knew was there. So, just going back to that uh, time unit bar, if we just quickly select the sniper, you can see that his range of movement is fairly limited while still being able to fire the sniper rifle. He's actually got quite a large range of movement if you see how far he can travel. So he's got a fair amount of time units, but because the sniper rifle takes so long to fire, he can't move very far and still be able to use it. If we switch over to his pistol, you'll see that the blue area has expanded. The orange area is still the same, so he hasn't gained any additional time units, but he can now actually move further and still be able to fire his pistol. Somebody did ask previously if this can be abused by switching to one weapon and then switching back to the other. The answer to that question is no. I've switched to the pistol. If I go and move to the extent of the blue range where we can still fire and take a shot and then switch back to my sniper rifle, you will now see that we do no longer have enough time units to take that shot. Let's just go and end the turn so I can demonstrate what I want to. So let me go and move this guy forward somewhere where he's going to have a line of sight to probably both of these guys. So let's go ahead and move over here. And we spot another enemy, but that was to be expected. So the normal way of targeting would be to select fire and then we can use the tab key or we can click on these little icons down here and tab between the different targets. Now we can't target the one that's behind these crates because we can't actually see him. We know he's there. We can actually just see a little bit of him peeking out from behind the box. But we can't actually target him. Now, firing my weapon would fire some shots towards the alien. You can see that we've made some other changes to the interface here. If you actually look at the uh, flashing health pips here, what this is actually telling you is the full health, the uh, fully flashing pips, so the first four, that's showing us that we're definitely going to do four damage here if we hit. And the remaining four that are flashing here with the sort of diagonal lines on them, that's the maximum damage we could do. So we're, we're, we're guaranteed to do four damage and we could possibly do up to eight damage. So it's just showing us the difference there. But one thing that I can do here, instead of just taking the shot, is I can actually either click and drag with the mouse or zoom in with the mouse wheel. And it will actually go into this sort of first person targeting mode. Now... This is something that every class will have. It's not to be confused with the sniper's ability that lets him snap target to individual body parts. Snap targeting to individual body parts actually gives the sniper an aim bonus. You don't get an aim bonus with anybody else for using this method. But it does allow you to fine-tune where you're actually going to take the shot. Now, some people have asked 
uh, if the idle animations are going to affect aiming. Well, of course, you can see that the creature here is actually moving, uh, but it's not moving very much. We are going to implement sort of a bullet time where the idle animation will slow down to make it less likely that, um, you know, if you've got it right on the sort of edge of a body part, the idle animation can go on and off like it is doing there. But you're not going to hit right in the middle of the crosshair anyway. You see these two circles? These circles actually represent where your shots are going to go. There is a percentage assigned to them. I can't remember off the top of my head exactly what it is at the moment. I believe that 25% um, of your shots will go within the green. 75% of your shots will go within the red. So they could still be within the green. So basically your shots could go pretty much anywhere within this circle and as I zoom out you can see that zooms with me so zooming in doesn't really affect the aim so if I take this shot I could hit that body part or I could hit this cover here or I could hit the, sh the shield or I could hit the carapace or I could hit this uh, uh, dead Chiron's leg over here so it might not hit the target I'll just take the shot anyway for demonstration purposes and some of the shots did go through there. We actually uh, clipped his leg slightly. There are some things that are not reporting properly. Like I said, this is a development build. But let's just have a look at one more thing we can do. Let us go and bring our heavy forwards. I just want to bring some people up. So our heavy at the, the moment doesn't uh, can't target anybody. This is something that will be changed later on. But what we can do is if we select our assault here and just move our assault forwards. I want to actually move him to this spot. So once again, we've got an assault who has a line of sight on this guy. As you can see, we've now removed that uh, lamppost that was over here. We've actually completely destroyed that by shooting at it, and we could take a shot at this guy. But what I can also do is I can aim over here towards that second crab man. Now, he's actually behind the cover. He's behind this crate right now, but I can literally just fire straight into that crate. And I did hit his shield there. If he hadn't have had his shield facing me, uh, I'd have most likely done some damage to him. But I was able to freely aim at the cover and actually take a shot and take the cover out. So that's basically the way that the free aim system is going to work. You can still use the snap system if you just want to take a quick shot without fine-tuning your aim. But this way allows you to aim at specific body parts and also take shots at cover.